When I tell you that I've had to hype myself up to sit down and record this episode, I am not lying. I feel like I've recorded every possible thing that could be recorded, saving this one for last in avoidance of it. And I'm honestly a little bit nervous to share all of this publicly because I am literally in what I like to refer to as the messy middle. We love to show up when we have everything buttoned up and figured out. We can say, look at how far I've come, but here I am today. And what I am admitting to you is the fact that I am burnt out. And I think we've all been here before. I know I have been here before. If you haven't been in a place of burnout, you are so lucky. So let's talk about exactly what I'm doing about it and how maybe you can take some of the tools in my toolbox from over the last decade when you inevitably find yourself in a season of burnout too. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. So I kind of referenced that this time it just feels different. And it really, really does. Because in the past, I have felt burnt out before. But in those stages and phases of my business, the reason for my burnout was because I was working around the clock and I was lacking boundaries. And I feel like each season of burnout teaches you something new. And so I feel like I do have a lot of tools in my toolbox this time around. But the reason why this one feels so different is because it's not due to overwork. I feel like over the last five years, especially since becoming a mom, I have really worked to create a beautiful rhythm, to create amazing boundaries, to create a business that supports all of the facets of me. And so What's been so peculiar about feeling burnt out this time around is it would be so much easier if I could just say, oh, of course you're burnt out. You've been working too much or too hard, but that's actually not the case. I feel like I have had really strong boundaries and rhythms in my business this year. And so that burnout tells me that it's stemming from a different place. And here's where I think it is. And I haven't fully landed on this again. Remember, I'm still very much in the process of this. But where I think the burnout is stemming from is that I have an amazing business and I have built it so thoughtfully and intentionally. And one thing that I found as a tendency of mine is that when things get simple, I tend to add complexity or maybe even seek out chaos to stay busy. I've been doing therapy and one of my core beliefs that I am trying to rewire in myself is if I just work harder, everything will work out. And that has just been something that is innately instilled in me since I was a kid. I've just been such a hard worker. And so over the years, I've just been unwiring that, that it's not necessarily about pushing harder, doing more, working harder. I've really had to let go of that hustle culture mentality. And I feel like I've succeeded successfully been able to do that over the last few years. But what's been so interesting in that is because I built my business so intentionally in this kind of rinse and repeat sort of way, I've removed a lot of the creativity and the ideation and the vision casting from it. My business is so beautifully predictable. And that is such a blessing when it comes to things like safety and security, but it is not necessarily lighting a fire in my creative being. And recently I was in our biggest launch we've ever done and it was so successful and we smashed every goal we had set and it was amazing. And there were so many parts of it that were like, wow, I can't believe we're doing this. And I also can believe we're doing this. And it was great. But during that launch, I just kept having this feeling of like, this isn't it. Like this isn't the only thing. And it's hard to explain what that means because I was simultaneously holding so much joy and appreciation and gratitude while holding this feeling of like, is this it? Like what's next? Am I just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again? And during that launch, I had this Facebook memory pop up. I love those when they remind you of the places you've been. And it was from nine years ago when I launched my very first course. I have been launching courses for nine years years. Talk about putting in the reps, right? And when that memory popped up and it was my very first course and it was called the Jenna Kutcher course with a handmade logo that I designed myself. I was just reminded of like, I have been doing a very similar business model for nearly a decade. When I look at the last 10 years of my business, most of them have been filled with the same things, the podcasts, the courses, and just showing up and doing a very similar thing. And 
that's beautiful in so many ways, right? It's very predictable. I've created rhythms. I know what to expect. There's just so much that's amazing about that. But I think that this feeling of burnout is stemming from this deeper knowing in me of like, this isn't the end. Like this isn't the end game. There's more, there's a next phase and evolution coming. And I just don't even know what it is. So the rinse and repeat of my business is a huge blessing. It honestly, it's something that I want to teach other business owners because it's afforded me an incredible life. And it's given me this business that can literally run while I rest. And what a blessing it is to have a business that can really run without as much effort on my part. Was there a lot of effort in the early days? You better believe it. But in today's era of my business, so much of it is on autopilot in such a beautiful way. And I love that. But I also think that it has stifled a lot of my creativity and some of the best parts about me. So I want to share a few of the things that I'm doing right now as I'm working through this feeling of burnout. So the first thing is, is just, I am really proud of myself because I have been paying closer attention to how I'm feeling. And I've also been so much more patient in sitting with it. I feel like in the past, when I felt feelings like this, I literally either try to work myself away from the feeling or rush through it or move on to the next thing or add chaos to everything and blow it all up. And this time I feel like I am just sitting with it asking myself questions and honoring it. And I think so much of that is from a lot of the inner work that I've been doing with myself, with my therapist, with my team of just like, I don't have to rush through this. And I think being a mom of emotional children has taught me so much of like how our tendency is to just try to rush back to like happy and good. And when we do that, we miss like the depth of the human experience. And so I guess I've just been really like paying closer attention to like my own thoughts and beliefs and feelings and just trying to honor them. You know, it was really interesting that I like noticed, like I was more lit up about my little gluten-free sourdough starter than I was about a record-breaking launch. Like that told me something right there, right? Like, and just like paying attention to things like that and paying attention to like, what am I thinking about? What am I curious about? What am I waking up excited about? What am I dreading? What am I not looking forward to? And so that's the first thing I've been doing. The second thing that I've been doing is like really just like leaning on the things that are truly lighting me up right now and exploring the questions that I have in my head and in my life without judgment. And it's so funny because a lot of times when I hit a place of like very certainty, like where I'm in this place of certainty right now, like I'm just burnt out. I want to like, <laughs> just like blow everything up. Like that is just like my tendency. I'm very all or nothing, which I'm trying to find like the shades of gray in my life. And so when I started feeling this way, I was like finding myself being very curious about different things in life and things that used to sound super boring to me now sound inspiring. And I am kind of joking with myself and my family of like, am I, I'm too young to be going through a midlife crisis. I'm too old to be going through a quarter life crisis. I am like in my one third life crisis era. And I say that like jokingly, um, because it doesn't feel like a crisis. It feels like a rebirth and like a discovery phase. And I think a lot of that is also feeling like I'm finally out of the trenches of those early motherhood days. My girls are two and five, so they're still very young, but I feel like I'm out of the weeds in a way that like when you're in them, you don't even realize it. And so I feel like my bandwidth has like expanded of me wanting to be curious about who I am outside of motherhood and work. What do I love? What lights me up? What excites me? And like, what a privilege to even be able to explore those things. So I am taking a sourdough class with my mom every Thursday night in this cute little community center with like 15 other people, most of them who are over the age of 60. And I am ordering and getting into beekeeping. I love honey and I love bees. I've always loved bees. I just think they're amazing. And so we are going to be beekeepers. We're planning out a garden. I even signed up for a local rowing club, like literally rowing a boat on Lake Superior with a team. Um, I am just very curious about what I want to do and who I want to be. And again, a lot of the things that I'm like very excited about right now, if you would have asked me a year ago, two years ago, I would have laughed and been like, no, that is not me. And now I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm kind of like awakening with just, uh, more bandwidth to be more curious and to explore those curiosities. 
I've also been talking to my friends and just been like really transparent about where I'm at. And especially with people who can hold a safe space and understand this experience, even if it's not the same as theirs, I feel like being able to vocally share, like I am burnt out and these are the things I'm thinking about, or these are the realizations I'm having, or this is the way I'm feeling right now. It is really hard to find people that can relate to your experience, no matter where you're at in your life. And so I feel like oftentimes I kind of just shut down and I shut people out when I'm in a phase like this. And this time around, I've been so open and honest with my friends. And I'm like thinking of three people off the top of my brain that like I send them a voice memo and was like, okay, here's what I'm going through right now. And this is what I'm navigating. And I don't even need advice. I just want to like let you in. And the more that I've shared this feeling, the more that other people can relate to it. And it makes me feel so much less alone. And I feel like there is this movement of women who are realizing that like, we want businesses that give us freedom. We don't want to be on the hustle game. We don't want more, more, more. We want enough and we want like full lives. And Maybe this has always been around and I'm just waking up to it quite possibly, but like, I do feel like there's a shift and there is a new type of entrepreneur being born and I'm excited about it. And so it's like the more that I speak to other women who are in similar stages of life, especially with other moms who are running businesses, the more that I feel understood and related with. And it's just been really, really great to like let people in and to also not have to say like a million caveats, right? Because when you enter conversations and you're like, I sound so ungrateful right now, or like nobody's going to understand this, you're not even giving people a chance to try to understand you. And so that's been really good. Another thing I've been doing is being really transparent with my team. I want my team to know what I'm working through. I want them to know where I'm at. I want them to know what I'm hoping for. And so I literally had a team call and it was such an interesting call. There was such dichotomy in it because on one part of the meeting, we are celebrating this huge launch and just this beautiful team effort and like, wow, look at what we did. And on the other side of that meeting, I was also sharing, here's where I'm at in my personal life. And I just, I need to be free to up right now to like explore what's next. And and I'm not afraid of evolution and change. I just don't even know what it is because I'm so in the weeds right now. And so I think that as a leader, that transparency with a team is just like so powerful because, you know, there's so many parts of us that like want to show up. Like we've got this all together. We've got this all figured out. You don't have to worry about anything. And I don't want my team to worry about anything. There's nothing for them to worry about, but I also want them to be in on my human experience and to know like as someone who's leading, like as a visionary, this is what I need to find the next vision. And so I've been very transparent with my team and they've been so amazing. And I hope that I offer the same opportunity for them to be transparent with whatever they're facing in their own life. And so I just am grateful to be able to be in community with the team that I've built and to be able to feel safe enough to say like, I love you guys and I love what we've built. And this is amazing. And we are breaking records and we are doing more than we ever dreamed we could. And I also don't think this is the end. I think there's more for us. Um, Another thing I've been doing is like taking more breaks and there's been a huge shift. I shared this before on the show. I saw this quote and I don't know where it originated, but the quote was, instead of asking yourself, did I work hard enough to deserve rest? Ask yourself, did I rest enough to do my best work? And ever since I heard that line, it just resonated so deeply with me because I think I've been wired my entire life of do all the hard work and then like have the joy. And I have been this queen of like delaying joy and gratification because I don't believe I've worked hard enough to actually enjoy it. And so I've been trying to flip that on its head um, and really rest be still, look at prioritizing that first and then work. And so it can feel counterintuitive to the wiring so many of us have as achievers, but it has been so powerful. And so I've been taking more breaks. I've been really kind of setting up my days with a different rhythm that allows for more breaks, which again, such a privilege. I understand that. But I've also just been like really honoring like I think I just need a break. I think I just need to rest. And uh, there's a quote by Banksy and it's like, when you get tired, rest, don't quit. And I think so many people are quick to quit when really all they need is a rest. So I've been taking more breaks. The next thing I've been working on is breaking the endless cycle of scrolling. 
isn't it funny how we literally go from like Instagram to email to Slack to Facebook, back to Instagram, back to email. It's like, we're looking for work. We're looking for entertainment. We're looking for distraction. And one of the things that we've been doing, we've been doing this for a very long time. So one, we don't sleep with our phones in our bedrooms. We have not done that for years and years and years. Like our bedroom is a space for reading and sleeping. We also got this awesome box in our pantry where you plug your phone in and it basically gamifies the experience of not being on your phone. And so Drew and I have gotten into beautiful habits surrounding our phone use. And so I feel like overall our habits are pretty good, but I can also notice like where my thumb literally just goes to different apps when I'm trying to distract myself or be bored. And so I've been really trying to be mindful about my consumption. Even this morning, I logged on and I saw that one of my good friends was diagnosed with breast cancer. I read a terrible story in People Magazine about a woman who passed away from sepsis after delivering a stillborn child. And like just seeing all these different things and like it just totally hammered my mood. And it was such a reminder of like, if I wanna be creative, I have to focus on being the creator. It doesn't mean blocking out life. Like that, it doesn't mean avoiding it, but it also needs means that we have to be conscious consumers. And when I started consuming that stuff, all I started to feel was like this heaviness. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get, I gotta get out of this. And so just trying to break that in endless cycle of like jumping from app to app to app looking for something and instead like looking up looking around like what could I be engaging in in my life outside of this I have been reading a lot more I love reading I have always been a reader I read every single night before bed I read a devotional every single night and then I read a book for fun I've only been reading for fun for a very long time I cannot read business books or health books it just I fall asleep right away so I have been reading at bedtime, but I have also been reading outside of bedtime. Um, Fridays is my day off where we do a four day work week. So Fridays is kind of like my special day. And lately I've been climbing into a bunk bed in our house and just reading and like turning the lights off and reading my Kindle and just like relaxing into a book. And so I love reading and I've just been reading for fun. So if any of you have great book recommendations that are fun or quick or thriller reads, send them to me on Instagram. I would love it. I am just being like a very excited reader these days. And I just feel like it's so fun. And also like my kids love reading. I don't know. I just love reading. Okay. I've also been journaling more and I have my five minute a day journal, which has been so helpful to just like track phases and trends in my life and business and to like see where things align and see like where the tension is or like what might be burning me out. But beyond just doing like five minutes a day, I've also been like writing again and just writing for the heck of it. And I'm really proud of myself because I think oftentimes I love to write when I figured things out. And so I'm like writing in the midst of this of just like how I'm feeling and just documenting this part of it because I think this is a huge part of the journey. And it's so interesting too, because when I hit burnout again, there's a part of me that was like, I didn't think I would get here again. Like I thought I learned my lessons the last few times and I haven't been burned out in a long time. Like I'm very proud to say, I feel like my last season of burnout was probably before I had kids. And so it was almost surprising when it knocked back on my door of like, oh, I thought I got rid of you. Nope, you're here. You're just here in a different version. And so journaling has just been really good for me because I feel like whatever is happening in my life right now, it is pivotal. Like it is going to be a phase of life that I look back on and recognize that there were so many like blessings in the burnout or that the burnout led me to the next chapter, the next stage, the next season. And so the burnout is speaking. I am listening, but I'm also documenting. And so journaling has just been so so great for me. And I'm excited to also like, read this when I'm past it. I can't wait. Um, another thing I've been doing is listening to music instead of podcasts or audiobooks. Like a lot of times the productive side of me who loves being productive always wants to be learning and ingesting and consuming. And so a lot of times, like when I'm in the shower, I'll put on a podcast or an audiobook. When I'm in the sauna, I'll put on a podcast or an audiobook. Like I am loving that noise in my life. And I, I have found that like I've been struggling lately to get quiet with myself, which is a great indicator that I'm burnt out. And so instead of constantly filling my world, my brain, my life with other people's voices, I've been leaning on music more heavily. Uh, one of the best things we did when we built our house is that we like wired in speakers in like all different areas of our house. And so I've been putting a lot of like healing music on and just like relaxing, slow music. And honestly, it's so interesting. It totally shifts the environment for us, for our kids. Like it's beautiful. So like when we eat dinner, we just have calm music on. Um, last night we were listening 
And the song that Drew and I danced to at our wedding came on a random Spotify playlist. And we got to like tell our girls that story. And just like, you know, I can listen to Disney music like the rest of moms out there. But like if if I can put on quiet, calming music and my kids don't really pay attention, oh, it's the best. So just been kind of balancing my nervous system more, protecting my own energy And listening to music and opting for that over the busyness or sometimes the chaos of podcasts and audiobooks. And that's been like a good, just like cortisol reducer. Two more things. Um, I have been working on trying to break my productivity obsession. And this is a huge one for me. And I, I have only met one other person in my life who has admitted to this obsession at the level that I feel like I have it. I am so obsessed with being productive that like I am constantly looking at like every minute in my day as something that is a time space where I can get something done. I am so obsessed with being productive that I want to take the least amount of steps to get something done. Like I am constantly wired to think of what is the fastest, most efficient way to do anything, whether it is watering the plants, doing the laundry, putting my kids to bed. I am so wired and wound so tightly around productivity that breaking this has been so hard for me. And it's interesting because like I, I was telling my friend who admitted to this type of obsession, I was like, I even like getting into my car, like as I buckle my seatbelt, I'm pressing start, I'm hitting the garage door opener. Like I am constantly thinking about like how to make the most of every single minute. And I don't necessarily know where that stems from. I honestly think a lot of it might come from my days when I was super into gymnastics and I basically like would go straight from school to gym and get home at 9 p.m. and go to bed and do it all over again, where I had to be so mindful of every minute of time. I would do my homework during lunch and recess so that I didn't have to do it when I was at gymnastics. And there's nothing wrong with that. That was just like what I love. That was my passion in my life. But I think that some of that wiring of like being productive and like working so hard and spending every minute to make sure that whatever you're doing is the best spend of that minute um, is beautiful. And it's also really challenging to unwire. So I'm working on it. Uh, my strategy brain is so powerful that it's taking a lot of effort and work, but I'm working on it. Okay. The last thing that I've been doing is just logging off of social media more. Um, I came out of that last launch. I was feeling so burnt out on creating content and posting content. And, and it's not content that I necessarily love, It's not content that like sets my heart on fire like there has been in the past. And I literally didn't post for 10 days straight. Like I didn't announce that I was not going on. I just like, I had nothing. I had nothing to say. I had nothing to share. I just needed a break from creating and sharing and thinking about anything in my life as content. And it's hard because I don't share my kids' faces online. And if I open my camera roll, 90% of my camera roll is my children. And when I'm not with my kids, the other part of my life is working. And working looks like sitting on a laptop and that's not fun to show or to watch. And so I'm trying to figure out like, what do I even want to share? What do I have to bring in this stage of my life? What do I want to connect with people over? And this has been hard because like, I just don't feel lit up by social media right now, the consuming and the creating of it. And so I'm just trying to figure out like what that is, but I'm also giving myself so much grace. I was just talking to someone. I was like, I haven't posted in 10 days. And they were like, I love that you're not stressed about it. And I was like, I don't even have like the energy to be stressed about it. Like I just have nothing to add to that platform. And I think too, so much of it is because like I create my content. I don't have this huge team just like churning out content. Like it is me. It is coming from me. And when I have nothing to say or share, then I'm not posting. So just like giving myself that grace in that season and recognizing like I have been consistently creating and posting content for 12, 13 years. It's okay to take a couple weeks off and also just reestablishing what do I want that relationship with social media to look like? And like, how do I want to navigate this phase? All questions I'm asking. Honestly, I feel like I have more questions than answers right now. And it is a beautiful season because I do like in my heart of hearts, I just feel like I am on the cusp of something beautiful and something that's next and something that's new. And I have no idea what it is. And I know with certainty because I've been here before in different iterations and different versions, but that beautiful things come from these types of feelings. And I don't think the burnout is because I don't love what I do. I love what I do. I just want to do something different and I want to try something new. And so figuring out like, what does this look like? How do we move through it? How do we honor this incredible business that we've built 
while also freeing me up to get quiet with myself, to ask these questions, to pursue these curiosities, to kind of figure out what's next. And again, like the quote Banksy says, if you get tired, rest, don't quit. And so honoring this season of rest, I'm so excited because as this episode airs, I recently just celebrated my birthday. I had some time with my friends and I also just plan to have a very light month of April. And I feel like this next vision is coming to me in bits and pieces and fragments and that I actually have the bandwidth to be curious about it, to explore it, to be quiet with it. And so I don't know what's next, but I know where I'm at right now and I'm showing up exactly where I'm at. And I know that someday I'll look back on this episode and be like, oh, I remember that. That was unique. Here's what came out of it. And so I just want to encourage you, if you have hit burnout in the past, or if you are in a state of burnout, oftentimes the breakthrough is coming. And I hope that these tools that I've shared and the things that I'm doing while currently in it, just help inspire you to think through the things you can do more. The more that we lean into the discomfort, the more that we reveal what we're actually craving and don't keep pushing. Don't force yourself to slow down. Um, Take care of yourself honor yourself and pay attention. I'm just going to keep leaning on these tools and continue to explore these curiosities and to prioritize rest in this process. And I can't wait to see where I end up. I can't wait to see what comes out of this. And I hope that you, my listeners, benefit from whatever it is. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Thank you for letting me have a space where I can share exactly where I'm at and be vulnerable. And also know that with all this feeling is just so much gratitude for this life I've built and this business that it is and the team that surrounds me and this community that includes you. Like I, it is not lost on me how lucky I am and how beautiful it is. I'm just excited to see what's next for all of us. So until next time, keep on digging your biggest goals. And remember, if you get tired, rest, don't quit. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have a quick second, take a second, make sure you're subscribed to my show. And if you love today's marketing tips, tricks, strategies, and life talk, then check out this episode. You are going to love it. If you're an entrepreneur, there's a really great chance that you are also creating content. And while you might not be quick to call yourself a content creator, the work that you're doing surrounding your offer, whether it's a digital offer, a service, or a physical product, is considered content. If you're showing up on the internet, if you're posting anything, if you're shooting off emails,